I'm going to say is probably the one of one of the uh, most one of the most uh, passages in the Bible that you've heard. And if, if you've ever if you've been in church any at all, from your youth as uh, even the young uh, children's stories of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. Like Noah and the ark. <clears throat> Makes a good story book, don't run it. It does. But this morning, I want you to keep the thought Richard said. Now, me and Richard, we haven't talked. We haven't we haven't spoken this morning. I just when we come in, I went and sat down. And, but I want you to keep that thought of, on the, what he quoted this morning about Proverbs, about training up a child. You know. I want you to, if you will, just give me a few minutes. There's Let nothing me. new that I can tell you. You have already know the story. Leave how, say, how, uh, how the king of Babylonia, Nebuchadnezzar, throwed his children in the fiery furnace. Yeah. You know the outcome. You know that he looked in and he seemed, said, did we not throw three men in? Yeah. Uh, yes, O king, we throw three. So, uh, you know, we know that he said, well, I see four, four men in the fire. One of them is looking as unto the Son of God. Uh -huh. But I think it's important that we read these messages, we read these passages and these stories of the Bible, and we look back many a time, and we think we're studying or we think we're talking to these, talking to these superhuman beings. Someone that has been walking face to face like Moses walked. If Moses was the only man who served God face to face. But we look at these people, Toby, and we think they were some kind of super Christian, some kind of super, uh, had super relationship with God like no other man. But I want to back up a little bit. I want to bring you to where we're at today. Bring you to the story today, and I want you to take another look or a closer look at these three men that was thrown in the fiery furnace. Mm -hmm. Their names was changed. That wasn't their names. The Babylonians give them a name, give them the names of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. As they changed, King Nebuchadnezzar changed Daniel. But Andy spoke last Sunday about the message that Jeremiah went and delivered into the temple and how that they was ready to take Jeremiah out and slay him. But every word that was spoken by the prophet of Jeremiah had been, has been fulfilled. We're looking at 20, 21 years later, everything that Jeremiah, Andy, that you taught last week has come to place. They... <coughs> Babylonians had come. They have de destroyed Jerusalem. They have tore the great temple of Solomon down. They have tore the walls down. They have burnt the gates. Yep. They have done everything that was spoken. So, these men, if you start in chapter 1, Nebuchadnezzar gave orders to the highest ranking unit, he said, I want you to get certain children out of Jerusalem from the king's seed, and I want, and different ones, and I want them to be without more or blemish. I want them to be good looking children. Don't want no handicaps or disabilities. I want these children to be well learned. I want them to be well spoken. I want them to be able to be educated in science, educated, and able to learn. And I want you to bring these children to my palace so that we can train them in our languages and we can teach them in our culture. So they did that. And those children Four of them from the tribe of Judah, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were brought to the king's palace. 
And if you read on to Daniel, <laughs> first chapter of Daniel, the king said, I want you to take meat from our table, wine, and I want them nourished. I don't want them to go hungry. I want you to feed them. I want you to take care of them. And in three years, they, I want you to present them before me. And that was done. Of course, we know the story that God laid it on Daniel's heart to not to take the king's provision. So Daniel, the Lord, put it in, into the heart of the one over the eunuchs, and he gave Daniel likeness. Daniel said, I don't want the king's meat. I don't want defiled with his wine or his meat. He said, I want you to just give us pulse, greens, vegetables, yeah. all we want. And he said, I can't do that, Daniel. If I bring you before the king, and you're a malnutrition, yeah, my job. the king will have me put to death. Yeah. Of course, we know the story that he, he went ahead, and that's all to Daniel, Shadrach, and Meshach, that's all he ate. And they fared. And the Bible said when it came to three years, that when they stood before King Nebuchadnezzar, that Daniel, Shadrach, and Meshach was better, yeah. ten times, the Bible said specifically, they was <laughs> ten times more healthier than the other children. So, then we go to chapter 2. So, ch chapter 2, we find that Nebuchadnezzar had a nightmare, a bad dream. And it bothered him. It bothered him bad. And he worried he couldn't sleep at night. He couldn't rest at night. Ronnie, somebody ain't heard this before. Take your time, buddy. So, he called all the astrologers, all the wise people, all his brain trust, as we would say today, brought him in. He said, I had this dream, and it really bothered me. He said, and I want you to tell me the interpretation. Try me in my sleep. They said, oh, king, okay, well, tell us what the dream is, and we will interpret it. Nebuchadnezzar said, no, here's the deal. I want you to tell me what the dream was and the interpretation. And they said, oh, king, there's no way. We don't know what you dreamed. You were asking something that nobody had ever asked before. You tell us what you dreamed, we'll tell you the interpretation. Uh -huh. We'll make up something. He said, no. He said, you tell me the dream and the interpretation. I have to give it to Nebuchadnezzar. That was pretty smart. Yes, sir. Because I, you tell me your dream, if I wanted to, I'd just make something up. Yeah. But now tell me the, what I dreamed, and then the interpretation, mm -hmm. I know that you know what you're talking about. Your father-in-law would have done it. <laughs> yeah, he would have. <laughs> yeah, he'd have told you exactly. <laughs> but, uh, so anyhow, Nebuchadnezzar, he was, he was a, he needed to go to anger management school. But he flew mad, as he does quite often. And so he put out orders. Have them all killed. All the wise people, all his astrologers, all his wise, all his brain trust, I want you to kill them all. Destroy their houses, ain't slay them all. Ain't worth their pay then. So, of course, Daniel and Shadrach and the Meshach, they was part of that brain trust. So they went and they was going to slay it. And Daniel inquired, he said, why is, what's going on? Why are they, he Nebuchadnezzar giving us such a severe punishment. What's going on? So they told him. And he said, uh, give me just a little bit of time. So he went back to the house and he told his buddies, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he said, we need to pray. We need to pray and pray hard. Because we're going to die, but we need to pray and ask God if he will be kind enough to tell us what he dreamed of the interpretation. 
So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel, they prayed. And the next day, Daniel, God enlightened Daniel's mind. And he told him. And so Daniel went and he said, take me before the king. And I will tell him what he dreamed and the interpretation. I am. That's stepping out, ain't it, right? So... We know the Bible records that he told him his dream and he told him exactly what he dreamed. And his dream was <laughs> the future, how Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom would fall, how he'd be great, but he would fall. So Daniel told him everything that he dreamed. And Nebuchadnezzar knew that he told him exactly what he dreamed. Mm -hmm. So then... Daniel found favor with the king of Babylon. And so Daniel was promoted. And when Daniel was promoted, he asked that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would be promoted and given jobs. So Nebuchadnezzar sent them over to provinces, uh, provinces in Babylonia. So they all had official jobs. They had government jobs. They were set in place. Now I want you to remember one thing. When these men, have you ever, when you hear this story, did you hear it? The children cast in the fiery furnace. The three Hebrew children. Yeah. Yeah, that's, That's what they was. Yeah. They were 16, 17, 18 years old when they were took into captivity. They stood three years being nourished. So the most they could be was 21, 22 years old at this time. So they was young men, 22, 23 years old. They was put in prominent positions. And of course, when you take a young person and you put them over top of people, they get mad and jealous. Mm -hmm. Especially if they, 40, 50, 60, 70 years old, worked all their life, and here comes this young punk, gonna be the boss. I remember, and I'll be honest with you, in the first foreman position I took, Johnny, you remember, I was 24, 25 years old, 26. And there was people, not Johnny. Johnny always was good. I mean, Johnny got along good. There was people that resented the fact that I was their boss. And I understand that. But I want you to <coughs> realize this morning, these guys was foreigners. Mm -hmm. They was not even from their country. Mm -hmm. And they was put in position over people that morally had followed Nebuchadnezzar into battle. They had followed him. They had been with him. They had been by his side. They had entrusted themselves to him. It. They had <coughs> worked yeah. and stood the test. But now, these guys are over top of them. So there was a lot of jealousy. So we come to our passage today. So Nebuchadnezzar decides... Now he was going to make a God. Yeah. Some say, some scholar says it's from his dream, that the vision of his dream, he did it. So they say that he built this God. And he put it in the plain of Durham. Durham. It was 60 cubits high, which is a cubic is one foot, six inches, foot and a half. So it's 90 feet tall, and it's six cubits wide, nine feet. So it's nine foot by 90 feet. And he stood it in a place where it could be seen from all over. And he'd give orders that any time that they would play music at certain hours of the day, that all would fall down and worship his God. Of course, we know that Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, 
When the music started playing, they didn't bow. Mm -hmm. They didn't worship. They didn't bow down. They didn't do what the king had commanded. So the ones that was already mad and jealous of them, I'm sure they was watching them like a hawk, yep. wanting them to make a mistake. Yep. They seen it as soon as it happened. And they could, they knew that on the dedication ceremony that all of them stood because they was a prominent part of the government. They stood that day, Andy, and heard the decree. They knew exactly what they were supposed to do. So they couldn't get by with, I didn't know. They refused to do it. So that brings us today. I know our lesson is three and it skips to eight, but I'm going to read right on through. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold whose height was three score cubics and the breadth thereof was six cubics. And he set it in a plain of dirt in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, sent together all the princes and governors and captains and judges, treasurers, counselors, sheriffs, and all the rulers over the provinces. Because we know that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they was already, <coughs> they was already uh, set over the provinces. So they was there. Then the princes and the governors and the captains and the judges and the treasurer and the council, the sheriffs and the rulers and the provinces, uh, the provinces were gathered together in the dedication of the image. And Nebuchadnezzar, king had set up and they stood before the image of Nebuchadnezzar and had, had set up. Then and Harold cried aloud to you is commanded O people, O nations and all languages. We know that Babylon not only took Jerusalem but he took several different countries in that region. At the time, at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sight, buck, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship this golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And whosoever falls down and worship shall at the same hour be cast in the midst of the fiery furnace. Therefore, at the time when the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sight, buck, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people in the nations and languages fell down and worshiped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Wherefore, at the time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews and spake and said to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sack, butt, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whosoever falls down, whosoever falls not down and worship, that it, he should be cast in the midst of the burning fire furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the provinces, provinces of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They have served not thy gods, nor worshiped the golden image thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage, fury, commanded the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they should be brought to these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my God, nor worship the golden image that I have set up? Now, if you be ready, I'm going to give you, he said, I'm going to give you one more chance. Now, if you be ready, what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image I have made well. But if you worship not, you shall be cast into the hour in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And whom, and who is He's asking them a question now. He said, And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said, and said to the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we've been we are not careful to answer it in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O oh, king. But if not, but if he don't, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve the God nor worship the golden image that thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, full of fury, and the form of his vision changed against Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that the heat of the furnace won seven times more than it than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that there was an arm in it, the most mighty men in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning furnace. These men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame from the fire flew, slew those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished, and he rose up in haste, and he spake, and he said unto the counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered, said unto the king, True, O king. He said, He answered and said, Lo, I see four men walking in the midst of the fiery furnace, and they have no hurt, and they have no form, and the form of the fourth is like unto the Son of God. So we Heard the story, and we know the story. But the point I want to get across this morning, we're talking about Bobby, we're talking about 20, 22, 23-year-old people. They wasn't, their whole world had been shattered. They was born in the time that Jerusalem wasn't prosperous. They were born in a time where in corruption. Right. They seen their whole world destroyed. Yep. They were just young men. They wasn't standing at Mount Sinai when God spoke of a voice of a thunder and cloud. They wasn't standing the day that God separated the Red Sea and they walked across. They wasn't standing there the day that that God separated Jordan and they walked across dry land. They wasn't there to see all the mighty miracles and all of the things that God Almighty had done for them and their nation. No, they seen a country yeah. evil. They seen a nation <coughs> turned against God. They seen a, another nation come in and destroy everything they had. They seen their Ken folk killed on a battlefield. They see seen them maybe all. their uncles, their aunts, maybe their mothers and daddies. They seen them die. The day Babylon come in and destroyed. They seen their houses destroyed. They seen their town tore all to pieces. They seen their gates burnt. They see everything destroyed. Yeah. They, these men, they didn't stand. God hadn't spoke to them out of the cloud. God hadn't did no great miracles in front of them. These men were like you and I. These men, I've seen many of people, they say, if God would just show me. Yeah. If God would do this miracle. Come on, Rob. If God, where's God at? They say, where's God at? I've never seen a mountain just move. Tell me, I ain't never seen Big Cold River divided. I ain't never seen God speak to a cloud to me. Oh, but he spoke 
But I know he's God. And I know he's real. And I know he is able to deliver me. How? What them boys had? Them boys had the word of God. Been trained. They had been trained. They had been taught. Only thing they had on was what they read in the Bible. Yeah. That's all they had. They had read what the scribes had wrote down. They had read Isaiah. They had read, they had read Thomas. They had read the word of God. And they said, King, I know that God is able. Yeah. I know he's able. Yeah. That's what he told them, Josh. He said, but if he don't, yeah. I'm still going to follow him. Yeah. Amen. We leave these stories and these Bibles and we think, well, God would just do this or do that. If I would see the miracles that he done like this, these boys didn't see it. These boys hadn't seen nothing but trouble all their life. They had been through the fire. They had already been through a fire. But they trusted in an almighty God. Why? Because his word said so. <laughs> Maybe they read Isaiah. Maybe they read Isaiah and he said, Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. Come on. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. Come on, <laughs> when the rivers flow, I shall. When the you go through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And walk, when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt, neither flame, neither on, the flame be kindled against on. you. I'm sure they have heard that. Folks, I don't know. What is going to take? There's folks listening. Going over the airways that they're looking for some great miracle. They're looking for some great sign. They're looking for something. And they've got everything they need right here. That's right. Yeah. Mm. Andy, your family's been through the fire. Huh? The Atkins, Tammy, all of you, you've been through the fire. But the word of God said, if he, he would never leave you, he would never forsake you, he'd be with you always. Yeah. He said the flame may be kindled against you, but it will not overtake you. Yeah. He said you may have to go through a flood, Andy, but the waters won't overcome you. That's the God I serve. These three men, these three Hebrew children, they had nothing but heartache and trials all their life. This James is all they had to go by. Yeah. And guess what? It was good enough for them. Yeah. That's what they stood on that day. Come on, man. They said, we don't know, Nebuchadnezzar. I don't know. We know he's able. I don't know if he's going to or not. But I know he's able. But listen, yeah. if he don't, I'm still standing on this right here. Come on, man. Because I know there's better days that come. Amen. Amen. God's word will never change. And I stand on it today. Come on. And all my hope is in Jesus. Amen. You might say, oh. They've been in the fire before. No, they hadn't, Ronnie. Nope. Nope, they They've been trained. That word of God was instilled in them. It's right. <laughs> they trusted it. Go ahead, Zach. I don't know what your need is, but I'm telling you what. Ronnie, I may have not been, I ain't been in the furnace of fire, uh, but I know one thing. If I have to go there, he'll take care of it. Time to pray. Time to pray. So many times I've questioned certain circumstances and things.
could not understand. Many times in trials, weakness blurs my vision. Come on, son. My frustration gets so out of hand. Oh, God. Pray, church.